this is phenomenal. So this is your wiki. Yes. And, and first of all, can you tell us, Alex, why the hell does a company even need to have a wiki? It's the shared brain. If a company doesn't have the wiki, a wiki, all the knowledge of the company is in people's meat and flesh brains, and uh, and it doesn't have an API. It's not. Well, it does. It's just a very inefficient one. It requires someone to be uh, awake and at their desk. So getting all that data out of people's heads and into this wiki is, is key to scaling. Uh, you got to reduce that, that bus factor. You got to help people answer their own questions. And, and, and I imagine that you didn't realize, well, let me ask you this. Before you installed this wiki, did you think it was needed? I, um, I, I did have an idea that documentation was needed to scale the company, maybe not to the same extent as, as you showed me. Um, but I did meet the founder of DigitalOcean and he sat me down and said, Alex, the wiki is the most important thing and you got to get it started early because that is how you scale. Awesome. And then what's the, what's been the result? Okay. So you, you tell us that it's super valuable. Can you please? Yeah. Let me just show you. Okay. Awesome. I've got a few good, a few good examples. So Great. You, we start out with some kind of meta information, which is about how you use the, the wiki. And then um, this is more company information, you know, company hierarchy. It's very important to have an org chart readily accessible it's surprising me how many companies don't do this but you got to have that in there um we list every yeah, area Alex, of risk i'm gonna scare you a little bit it's surprising to me how many companies don't actually even have an org chart at all yeah not, not I, even, I the know. fact it's not available just doesn't even I, exist i heard that the other day about a major company that's about to ipo that doesn't have an org chart and it blew my mind <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah you got to have that um that org chart in there and um and then we, we, we list out areas of responsibility. The, these are the key areas in the company and who's responsible for them. And, um, and we, we talk about some of the company long-term vision and goals and things. And this is a big part of the onboarding of every new employee. They'll go through this wiki and, and read the, the key parts of it. You've got well, under, well, about- well, well, I imagine this takes on effective onboarding from three to six months to three to six weeks. Because you've got to collect all this information by going around and talking to people. You don't even know who to talk to. Yeah. And all of a sudden now it's here. You just read it. Right. Boom. How long does it take to read? Right. Exactly. I mean, it definitely, it definitely helps. That's for sure. Uh, in here, you've got uh, all our company employee profiles. And uh, there's like some whole fun little about text. And it's a good template that we have for every, every person. Uh, you've got the org yeah. charts and the values and um and some I'm, I'm just curious do you have any fun personal information about people in there as well or is it um, let me see um, how, about, how about you <laughs> let me see t okay, l gray yeah. hot yeah there you go you, you can see my <laughs> my phone number and birth date <laughs> okay <we're going. laughs> right on. but but i think this is important because you, you you know the way you create relationships with people is you show them that you know and care about the things that are the, the unique personal even if it's superficial details about them so for me to you know um ask you um you know, know that you like earl gray tea you're like oh that's really nice matt actually noticed me as a human as opposed to just considers me to be a transaction yeah okay. and, you know, and it I, doesn't take much but if you know a, that that little tiny bit is all you need and just yeah. let people know that yeah, that's right. You know, I don't just want to be seen as just another CEO. I, I'm, a, I'm a person. I'm a <laughs> exactly. And if you make uh, that information available to people, then, you know, have the person who lives in marketing, the person who lives in engineering, the engineer can reach out to the person in marketing, look up this information and realize the person likes tennis and say, hey, yeah. you know, Sarah, I, I, I saw that you like tennis. I, I like tennis too. It's, that's great to hear. Boom, we also we also have enneagrams in there as well, um, wow. so th that that helps people understand each other. Awesome. Um, all right, so let's so let's go into the rest of the this wiki. So every team has uh, their wiki area, mm -hmm. and so here you can see the growth and marketing area. Um, 
And some of this will be dedicated to resources for people outside that team who perhaps have questions to ask that team or want to know who's in charge of what. Um, and for example, this is one of the first pages here where you can see who's on the team, um, how we do growth at Clearbit, and uh, all these areas and who basically who's in charge of what, um, how to answer your questions, how to work with this team, where we focus. And then we'll have uh, pages that are dedicated internally to the team. So for the team's own use as well. And, um, and a lot of the rest of the, like some of the wiki will be for the rest of the company, but some will be for that actual team. Fantastic. And I, I'd, I'd love to see one process because I know that you've also written down basically every role in the company and the areas of responsibility. We're putting a name next to who's responsible for each function. Mm -hmm. And one person can have, you know, 16 different functions that they're responsible for. And then I believe you've also, for each of those functions, you've written out how to actually do the function, what the process is. Yeah. So that a new employee can just onboard, see what they're responsible for and read how it's already been done. So they don't have to wonder or reinvent it. Can we see one process? Yeah. So the first part is the AOR, the areas of responsibility. So you have a directly responsible individual and a backup person for, yep. for every area. And, um, Perfect. and, this and goes, the backup this... gets trained in it as well. So they can take over during vacation or if the person, whatever happens. That's right. Oh, and, uh, and then you have what you were alluding to the, the processes. So, um, here's how to run a one-on-one. -on -one. Here's how to resolve this. These, these are my CEO processes. Fantastic. Um, but every, every, uh, can we, can we click through to one just to see what it looks like? And, uh, unfortunately, not the way I'm sharing it right now, but, it, um, okay. but the a process, it basically details such that anyone could follow along exactly how something is done. And uh, so you can see, here's all the, uh, here's how to manage, manage spending as a document for that. Here's how to manage this and that and the other. It's amazing. Uh, everything is documented here. I love it. And I imagine people looking at this like, oh my God, there are thousands and thousands of processes. That's going to take, you know, if I dedicate a writer to go interview everybody and write these down, it'll take that person five years to write it down. Right. So right. how the hell did you do that? I mean, I know the answer, but how the hell did you do this in a way that didn't just destroy someone's life and take five years? Well, writing down the processes and the AOIs is probably something that can be done synchronously. You'll get together and like write down the, the full list. It'll probably take an hour. It's a painful hour, but you'll get the full list. Obviously writing the actual processes down is gonna be longer. So the key thing is just to do it over time, just chip away at it. You know, it was a constant topic at our leadership meeting. You know, everyone had goals for the quarter and how much uh, processes that they documented and we had a little completion uh, stat for each for each department so you, you can kind of turn it into a game um, so but the key there was you didn't have one person go around write these processes for the whole company you basically spread it out to every single person so as I remember what we did was the first meeting was I think I wrote down or you wrote down a process and then we showed everyone and they said okay now everyone in this meeting write down one in, in the leadership team meeting, everyone write down one process. You've, you've already listed, we've already done the AOR exercise. You've already listed all the things you're responsible for. Take one of them and write a, a process. And we're going to take 15 minutes to do it. Everyone did it at the same time. Cause usually the first time people do something like, Oh, I don't want to do this. They put it off. They don't know what's supposed to look like, but if you show them and then you force them to do it in a group one time, then they really, they just do it. And the time goes by. And right. then I remember, you gave them everyone the homework of, okay, now it's each commit to A, get your teams to do this, and B, everybody, each human, each person, whether you're department head or team head or IC, write down one process per week. And our prediction was 12 weeks later, you'd have every single process in the entire company written. And each process only takes about 15 minutes to write. So each person would only have to spend 15 minutes per week to get that done. Now, my mm -hmm. guess is it probably took a little bit longer, but is that how you guys did it? Yeah, you're, t you're totally right. So every department was in charge of 
completing the processes for the department, but that doesn't mean the department head needs to write this. Uh, that can be distributed throughout the team. And it's like many hands make light work. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Um, you, of all the CEOs that I know, and I know many, um, you have created the tightest social bond among your teammates of any company that I know of. And we don't have time to go into it now, but at some point I'd love for you to share with the world if someone wanted to create that, because the benefits of that are just so great, the trust that it creates, the warmth that it creates, the fun that it creates, the, the desire for people to stay that it creates. And um, it just has tremendous benefits. But most people don't know how to do it, don't know how to create that, and you've created it. You're, you are the best in the world, as far as I know, at creating that. And so at some point, I'd love for you to share, if someone else wanted to create that much of a social bond at their company, what would they need to do? Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. And then maybe that uh, could be for the next podcast. But I would add one last thing. Um, I actually, after working with Matt, uh, I wrote down a blog post. And you can go on my blog, alexmccall.com, and it's called CEO Coaches. And in it contains a high level of all the main things that I learned through that experience. Uh, so if you're curious, check that out. Awesome. And should we also tell folks about the manager's handbook that you're in the process of writing? Yes. Or is it too early? Yes. No, if you go to themanagershandbook.com, I'm writing a book specifically targeted to, towards managers. Um, Matt's book, The Great CEO Within, is, is about for founders. My, my book is specifically for, for managers, and it details all the things that we've learned about management over the last five years, and I'm just trying to write the best management book and also run the best managed company in the world. That's my goal. I think you're getting there, my man. Awesome, Alex. This was fantastic. Thank you so much. I always love seeing and talking to you. And the fact that we now get to share this conversation with the world, I think is super fun. And so, thank you. Thank you. Awesome, my man. I'll talk to you later on. Yes.